Recall that a scatter plot can be used to assess the direction and strength of correlation between two variables, x and y. We can do the same thing with spatial autocorrelation by using a Moran's scatter plot. In this scatter plot, the horizontal axis is the variable x, our data values. The only thing here is that we've standardized them into z scores using the normal formula z equals x minus x bar over s. On the y axis, on the, hor on the vertical axis, we are going to have the neighborhood average of x. What I mean by the neighborhood average is assume you have this huge map, okay? And we are just, and this whole map is split up into a grid. And over here in this corner of the grid, say this is our grid, and each of these squares represents a neighborhood or a zone on the map, and say we have a crime statistic for each of these locations. So we could plot this x uh, axis, the horizontal axis, is just composed of the values of crime in these different locations. The vertical axis is the neighborhood average of crime. So let's assume that this is one of our locations that we've measured crime at. We can plot this value of crime on the x-axis, and then we are going to look at the neighborhood of that location. Say we're using the Queen's case, and we're going to calculate the average of all the crime in the neighborhoods around this target. And that is going to be our wx variable, our w crime. So we have crime versus the neighborhood average of crime at each location. So this spot over here, that's a spot where crime is two standard deviations above the mean. But if we look at the neighborhood average of crime at that location, so crime was two, but if we look at the neighborhoods all around there, the amount of crime in those locations is maybe slightly less is also high, but maybe it's only like 1.9. So typically speaking, when we have a Moran scatter plot, the points in this first quadrant are points where the x value is high, and those locations are also surrounded by high x values. So here's high crime surrounded by neighborhoods of high crime. Down here in quadrant three, We've got neighborhoods, say, over here, or they could be anywhere, they could be close by, but we have a neighborhood here that's a low crime, and its neighbors are also low crime. So that's these points down here. Sometimes we can have, in quadrants two and four, locations where the crime at a spot is different to the average crime surrounding that location. So here we have locations of low crime surrounded by a neighbor, neighborhoods of high crime. That's like this example. Or we could have a point, say, over here where we have a neighborhood that's very high crime, but the average crime surrounding that neighborhood is low, well below the mean. Okay, so the slope of this line through the Moran scatter plot is going to tell us whether or not we have positive autocorrelation or negative autocorrelation. And the strength of that correlation, say whether or not that correlation is going to be close to zero or close to one, is going to have to do with how far away this point cloud is from the line of best fit through the point cloud. Just like in normal correlation, we've decided that, that what, what controls the, the, the size of the correlation statistic is how much the points vary from this line. In this case, they're not too far away, but they're not too close either, and we end up of, with the Moran's eye of positive 0.5.